Hey folks, welcome back. I'm David. We're here in my shop where I build the war guitars. This is going to be episode number 20 of the tutorial series on how to build an electric guitar. And in this series, we're building this guy right here. It's looking really cool. I'm really pleased with the way this thing's turning out. Um, in this video, we're going to cover the buffing and polishing of this thing, which means we're going to start, we're going to level sand it with 600 grit paper. We're going to sand it up through 3000 grit. Then we're going to take it over the buffing wheel and, uh, and buff it out to this really deep, uh, clear gloss shine. So, uh, now if you haven't seen any of, uh, the other videos in this series, you know, we started all the way back from the design on paper to this thing, and we brought it all the way this far. And over the next couple of weeks, we're going to finish it up. And so if you'd like to check any of those others out, I'll go ahead and post a link up here right now for the, uh, for the series. And you can go to the beginning and check it out, but then come back and watch this one. Cause I want you to check this one out too. Anyway, why don't we get rolling with the video and don't forget to like and subscribe if you like it. Anyway, let's get started right now. All right, so we are down to the final stages of this guitar. Um, at least the wood part of the guitar. We'll be getting into the electronics really soon. But anyway, so this video we're going to cover the final sanding and the buffing and polishing of this, uh, this beauty right here. So let me bring you up to speed with where we're at so far. So as far as the finishing goes. So we have, uh, we did two rounds of Simtech sealer, which is my sealer and my grain filler. Sanded in between the rounds, of course. Uh, got it all leveled and, and looking really good. Then I did two rounds of the Tamco Euro Clear, which is a high gloss clear, high solids, high gloss. And I sanded uh, in between the two rounds of that. And now it's been curing out for about, I think I've let it go for about eight days now, which uh, you can probably do the buffing, you know, the next day if you wanted to, but I like to give it some chance to off gas everything and to really, uh, really get solid before I start doing this. And uh, so in the meantime, in those eight days, I went and finished the frets and I tackled some other things. Like I made these cool little, I put the magnets in these guys and I made it to where I could take off my back covers because I really like it without any screws in it. And I, I've just kind of tinkered with little stuff like that. But now we're going to get into the finishing of this thing. And I wanted to show you the products I use uh, for the sanding and everything. So I'm going to start with Super Aslix, which if you've watched any of the other uh, last few videos I've done, you've seen me using this. I'm going to start with the 600 grit. I'm going to sand down the whole thing very gently, just like I did before with the sanding pad and the the, uh, my sanding block and my little rubber eraser and stuff. Then I'm going to step it up to an 800 grit, same thing, super acylics, 800 grit. Amazing stuff. You all ought to give this a try. And then I'm going to switch to uh, 1000 grit, 1200 and 1500 grit in the super acylics. And that should have this just, just silky smooth and in really good shape. Now I'm going to try a new product that I saw uh, Patrick on uh, Adventures from the Shed of Dreams, his YouTube channel. And he used this, uh, this Trizact. It's made by 3M. And it's these sanding pads right here. It's a foam pad and it has a coating on it. And this one is 3000 grit. Okay. After the 1500, I'm going to rub it out with this. And then after that, I've got the Trizact pad that's an 8000 grit. Same type of thing, foam pad. I'm going to rub the whole thing out with that. And then I'm going to switch over to my buffing machine. And I hope with the fact that I'm using these two guys right here that I won't have to use my coarse compound. So I believe I'm going to start with my fine compound, which is this guy right here. It's a Menzerna number no. four, and it's a solid, uh, solid buffing compound you use on a buffing wheel. I'm going to do it with, the, with that one first. And we'll see. Now, if I have to switch back and go to the medium, I don't think I'm going to have to, but if I have to, I'll switch back and I'll go to the medium, start with the medium, and then to the fine. And then I'm going to finish it off with this Glanz Max 15, which is their ultra fine polishing compound. And I'll do that on, a, on the cotton wheel. So, and then after that, I'm going to use this Jeskar, which is a uh, guitar polish. It's just, it's kind of nice. You just squirt it on and you rub it in. And it just leaves it feeling real silky and smooth. And it kind of protects from fingerprints and stuff like that. So, anyway, uh, that's what we're going to do. We're going to get started. We're going to get this thing buffed up and shiny as could be. And I'm going to turn my camera down right here and we're going to get started on it right now. Okay, so <clears throat> I'm going to get sanding on this thing. But before I do, I don't know if you can see it in the light, but I did get a couple little 
uh, kind of runs in this thing. I got one right there. I've got one up here on the edge. Evidently, I got kind of heavy in this area here. So I got a couple on there. I actually got a little guy right here too. So the idea is to have this surface all sanded equally and evenly down into the into the urethane itself. And so I don't want to uh, I don't want to work on that spot and possibly affect the areas around it. So I'm going to there's a couple different ways of doing that. Let me get my covers out of the way first. Uh, what I'm going to do to kind of protect the surrounding area is I'm going to get a little piece of tape. I'm going to put it like right there and maybe on either side of it too. Get a little piece right here. I just want to get the top of that little drip off first and then we'll go ahead and block sand. So that's going to let me concentrate on that area without worrying about digging in to the surface around it. So let me get going on that, see how that works. This is incidentally 600 grit paper. Okay, so a lot of that's down. Now I'll remove this little piece here, which will let me go a little bit further. That's getting better. Let me pull this guy back. Now this guy, And as you can see, I'm using a rubber eraser on the back of this too, which provides a nice big flat surface. And that's still there, but it's almost gone. Okay, now I'm going to switch to the bigger pad, and I'm going to blend that in a larger area now. You could also see here I'm beginning to cut it through the orange peel. We want this whole surface to be leveled without runs. There's the ring around this opening too, as you can see, like I explained in the sealer uh, video I just did. You can see that little ring because that, that uh, clear tends to build up around the edges of these holes. Remember, this was hanging upside down, so that's the top edge of that, and it's building up. So we want to get rid of that too. Now that little drip that was there is completely gone. I just got to get this ring off, and we should be good to move on. Incidentally, I have found that when using this Super Aslix, I keep a, a towel, this is just an old bath towel. See that stuff on there? Comes right off. That's how, that thing is now fresh and clean again. So I always keep a towel close by. So that last round I did on that was at least, it was three, actually probably a little more than three coats. When you're sanding urethanes, you don't want to sand past a, a single round. In other words, I don't want to sand past those three coats. With urethane, those three coats, they bonded together because I did them within 30 minutes of each other. So they essentially become one coat. And you don't want to sand through that to get to the previous round because you would see a like a witness line cutting from one round to the one previous. So. Though I want to sand this and get rid of all these imperfections and things, look, there's a little drip right there too. I do not want to sand through this round, if that makes any sense. You can kind of see that orange peel right there showing up. Just like with everything else, there's a right way and a wrong way to do everything. And I'm trying to show you the way that I figured, figured out over the last few years that has worked for me. Okay, so I think that is looking good. I feel no ridge, and I'm not seeing it either And when I sand or when I wipe it down. So that area is good. I'm going to move on and focus on this center. So that's basically what I do. I take uh, one area of the guitar at a time, and I work it in kind of quadrants, and I get one where I think it's good, and then I move on to the next one. Now up in this corner of this guitar, remember that was hanging upside down and I'm not sure if uh, some uh, spray didn't get built up in that, uh, in that little control uh, cavity right there, but it came dripping out. I must have had four or five drips in that vicinity of the guitar right there. And I probably hit it a little too heavy with the, with the stuff too, but you've got to be really careful of getting rid of those drips. You can see there I'm, I'm actually shaving the top off with a chisel. You want to get that drip down to where it's perfectly level with the rest of the finish and then sand it together. 
because if it's if those runs or drips are not sanded out really well and brought perfectly to the level of the rest of the finish, you'll see a wave in that clear uh, after you buff it out. So I spent a lot of time, uh, I think there was about four or five of those things, and I spent quite a bit of time getting that, uh, getting that right. And they look good in the end too. I like using all those different tools. That's a little rubber eraser, which, uh, you know, it's firm enough, yet it's, it's soft enough that it, uh, it'll hold flat on those contours like that and, uh, you know, uh, spread, the, spread the load out, so to speak, of the sandpaper. I use that on the edges. I use the large sanding pad in the big areas. And then I have these foam pads, these flexible foam pads I used on the curved areas too, so. And if you notice too, I'm not hitting those corners of the guitar. I'll go back later with the foam pad and hit those. But I want to sand the flat areas or the, the you know the larger areas without hitting those corners because you'll sand through those corners very quickly. Now I'll go back and hit those corners, but I'm doing it very lightly. Okay, so the 600 grit is done. That was, uh, I spent probably three hours going through this thing. So with the 600 grit, I took out all the orange peel. I got any variation in the finish leveled back off. I took off, I shined out all the little shiny spots that I talked about before. And, uh, and it's leveled and ready to go. So that was the toughie. That one spent, I, like I said, I spent three hours on that. And now I'm going to take off and start doing the 800 grit, which is uh, their uh, super aslicks, their lemon, uh, what they call the lemon sheets. And, uh, and now the goal with these 800, 1,000, 1,200, and 1,500 is simply to remove the previous grit scratches. So 800 is going to take out the 600 grit scratches, 1,000 is going to take out the 800 grit scratches, and so forth. And this should go much quicker each, each pass. So. Uh, Anyway, I'm going to turn the camera back down and we're going to get going with that right now. Okay, so this guy has now been sanded all the way up through 1500 grit, and it's almost got a bit of a sheen to it. I don't know if you can see that, but it is absolutely silky as could be. I don't see any scratches in it whatsoever from the uh, previous grits. I don't see any 1500 grit scratches for that matter. But my eyes ain't the best. Um, anyway, I'm very happy with the way it's come out. So now the next thing I'm gonna do is this Trizact uh, 3000 grit uh, sanding sponge, sanding disc. Uh, I'm going to do a drive. I've never tried it before, and this is going to be my first time, so I'm kind of interested in seeing how this stuff works. So, we got the camera turned back down here, and we're going to try this stuff out.
You know, I'll tell you what, that stuff just put like a nice, kind of a dull sheen, but a, you know, I've thought about it on this, building this whole guitar, that this walnut is beautiful with that kind of a finish right there. Boy, that's just like a dull, hand-rubbed finish right there. I wonder if you could, if that shows up in the camera well. It just has a nice, kind of a matte sheen to it, but it's a, I don't know, it's like the gloss is coming back up, but only so far. Heck, I tell you what, if I get to the end of this guitar and I, I buff it up, and I decide I like this better, I'll just hit that Trizac back in this front again. I thought about that this whole guitar, doing the, the everything else except for this top and gloss. And uh, yeah, it's pretty cool, looks nice. Okay, I'll quit rambling on, I'll keep going. So I am like super impressed with that Trizact, the 3000 grit. I know I've been saying I was gonna go up to 8000 grit, but I'm not gonna, I gotta leave something left for the buffing wheel to do. But I am just really impressed, that is silky. And it's got a nice sheen to it. I could almost see where this guitar could be called finished. Maybe go over it one more time with that because it has just a nice low sheen to it. Very nice. That's what I would expect to get if I was shooting maybe a matte finish or something. Maybe a little less shiny than that. But anyway, so I'm going to go set up over there, get rigged up on my uh, buffing wheel. And uh, we're going to get buffing on this and see how it comes out. So that's a Minzerna buffing compound. It's their number four, which is, I think it's their very fine grit. And I'm using it on a flannel wheel. That's a 12 inch flannel wheel. Incidentally, next time I buy uh, another flannel wheel, I'm gonna buy a 16 inch, they're just better. That white one is a 16 on the other side. And it just gets you further away from the buffing machine. But, uh, but anyway, I'm just being very careful about it. I'm keeping even pressure, not, not too much pressure because you could burn through that really easily. I'm trying to stay away from sharp edges where that wheel will cut off the uh, cut the finish off an edge really quick. I'm just going back and forth. Now I have this at uh, you know double normal speed, maybe even triple normal speed, so I'm moving pretty slowly, even though it looks like I'm moving fast here. So that buffing machine, I made that a couple of years ago, and. Uh, uh, if you go to Chris Monk's uh, uh, Highline Guitars, his uh, YouTube channel, I believe he sells plans to make a buffing machine just like this. I made this prior to him having plans available, but I kind of made it like the one that he has in his channel. And it was not terribly expensive. I think it's got a half horsepower motor. Uh, you know, I, I bought, uh, if you go to Chris's thing, he'll have all the, all the stuff on there. Just go to Highline Guitars if you want to make one. I made it for about half the price you could buy one for. So also notice when I'm buffing, I keep that guitar basically on the lower quarter. I try not to get above that uh, the, the axle or the drive shaft of that thing. Because you get to that top edge, that buffing wheel can catch that guitar and fling it right out of your hand. So I'm doing my best to stay below the horizon or below the midpoint of that wheel, basically. Basically that front quarter, front lower quarter is the best place to keep it.
So now I'm over here at the 16 inch wheel. Now that's a, a cotton wheel and I use Glanz Max Ultra Fine um, buffing compound on it. And that cotton wheel is so soft and that, uh, that <clears throat> I switched to that buffing compound uh, for my final round uh, probably about a year ago and that is some awesome stuff. Glanz Max 15 I think it is. Really great stuff on the cotton wheel. Good combination. So once I'm done uh, buffing, or when I think I'm done buffing, because you never know, sometimes you got to go back and hit other spots, I like taking this Jeskar uh, guitar polish. It just, it'll clean off the, uh, it cleans off the uh, compound that builds up in some spots. I just like to wipe it down really good, get all the fingerprints, my marks off it. I am really pleased with this, uh, with the process I just did. I think it came out very well. I spent a lot of time sanding, so I spent probably, I probably spent three hours on the 600 grit sanding this thing, the dry sanding, which definitely took some time, but then the, all the rest of the grits from 800 up through 1500, or actually up through 3000, probably took an hour, hour and a half or something. It goes much quicker. Once you have it leveled, it goes much quicker. But anyway, after that's all done, I like to just wipe it down good, get into all these little crevices and whatnot. I mean, it came out just, to me, just absolutely beautiful. I couldn't be happier. This Jess car, Jess car just gives it like a nice slick finish on it, too. And then, my final thing is I'll take it out in the bright sunlight, and we're about to do that because it's a really sunny day here today. We're going to take it outside and look at it in the sun. Because sometimes there'll be haziness in some of the finish. You really can't see an indoor light, but you'll want to get rid of it. Which means if you do see a haziness, you'll have to start working your way backwards. I would try it on the ultra-fine buffer first. And if that didn't take care of it, because sometimes it's deeper than that, I would go back to the, the fine buffing wheel and just basically work my way back. And if there's any scratches that show up, which sometimes there is, any scratches show up, you got to go back and start working your way back through the grits of sandpaper and find out what grit those scratches are and take care of that. And then work your way back from whatever sandpaper you got to up to the end. Anyway, let's take this thing outside and see what it looks like. So I'm going to hold this thing up to the light and see if I can find anything. I'll tell you what, all that sanding really pays off. The finish looks very bright and clear. Not seeing any sanding scratches. I just love that uh, that red heart binding. I really do. That is just beautiful stuff. I think it's really good. I'm very pleased. And that little uh, epoxy logo came out pretty good too. Anyway, I think this is a keeper. Well, folks, I guess we better leave it there for now. Um, this thing, I'm really happy with the way this thing came out. I really am. I mean, it just came out really, you know, super clear. No hazy marks or anything. It's just, it's taken me a while to figure out how to, how to go through this level sanding and buffing process to really get this great, uh, this great looking gloss on here. And, uh, and I hope somebody got a little something out of that. It's been a, been a bit of a learning process for me to get there. And, and I just hope I helped somebody out somewhere. But anyway, I uh, hope you all dug it. And if you did, I hope you gave me a like and subscribe. And I appreciate you all watching. So God bless you. You all have a wonderful week. And we'll see you all in the next one.